young men and young ladies, I bid you welcome to another showcase at North Penn High School, another showcase of talent, talented, talented, talented young people. For tonight, we induct into the National Honor Society, the finest that North Penn has to offer. It is not easy to become a member of the North Penn High School Honor Society, nor should it be. But one, when one can do what these young people have done, they deserve that honor. They have a lot of character, give a tremendous amount of time to our service, tremendous leadership abilities, and certainly do extremely well academically. I congratulate you as parents, I congratulate all of us as the family of North Penn High School, the officers, their advisors, Mr. Brunt and Mrs. Fenimar, for continuing to bring into this society fantastic young people. Again, I bid you good evening, and I do hope that you will enjoy this celebration as much as I always do. Thank you very much. This is a very special evening. We're inducting over 100 new members this evening, of which fully one-third are seniors. And this is especially significant because it means many of these seniors have worked very hard as juniors to improve their averages to become academically eligible as seniors. And that's very significant. We've never inducted as many seniors uh, as we will this evening. This evening we will also be inducting the elected officers of this chapter. Would the officers please rise? The installation of any group of officers is an important and serious occasion. You have indicated your faith and trust in these, your elected officers, to serve for the coming year. Their service and accomplishments depend largely on your cooperation. Following is an important as leading. In any organization, there comes a time when some must lead for a while and others must follow. The National Honor Society is founded on the principles of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. In all your undertakings, may you always keep in mind these guiding principles. As officers, in accepting these offices, you have indicated your willingness to give the best in time and effort to carry out the principles of the National Honor Society. Yours is a responsibility as well as a privilege. The world today, as never before, needs faithful and efficient leaders, and your school is looking to you to lead as students. With this in view, do you pledge your best efforts in these offices that you accept? If so, please say, I do. We would now like to present you with guards that will be attached to your National Honor Society pins and which symbolize the office that you hold. Beverly Schwartz receives the gavel, symbolizing the office of president. Marie Evangelista receives the torch, symbolizing the office of vice president. Vicki Anders receives the quill, symbolizing her office of secretary. Nikki Johnson receives a key, she holds the keys to the treasury. And Christine DeMarco receives a scroll as activities coordinator. I know that list will be very long. At this point, I would like to introduce Chris DeMarco, who will talk a little bit about how the new members were selected.
his or her unique blend of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. To fulfill the scholarship requirement, the student had to have a 3.5 cumulative grade point average. A list of these students was originally posted, and those who were, and those who were interested were asked to submit applications, displaying their leadership and service activities. To determine the character of the candidate, each student asked four teachers or community people to submit, to submit recommendations. The most difficult task of all was that of the faculty council. The council reviewed each candidate's application and recommendations, and then selected those who they believed best met the qualifications of the National Honor Society. We would like to show our appreciation to the faculty council by asking them to stand. Mr. Wayne Bright, Mrs. Barry E. Fenemeyer, Mr. Stephen E. Frederick, Mr. R. Thomas Lemon, Dr. John Myers, Mrs. Sandy Stover, Ms. Mr. Royal Unsicker, Dr. Andrew Yanishak, Dr. Juan Arbaugh. Thank you very much. First of the National Honor Society's four virtues is leadership. As you know, a leader must possess many qualities. Some people, when asked to name some qualities of a leader, they suggest words such as hardworking, dedicated, and responsible. Those and other common descriptions are appropriate, but sometimes words like humble and modest are overlooked. Humility and modesty are important. These are traits that belong to a leader who works for the well-being of an organization and not for himself. Without abusing his power, a good leader knows when to take charge. He also knows when to step down and become a follower or a helper. As we develop into great leaders, we must remain moderate in our opinions of our abilities and qualities. Remember, as you go out to be leaders of your classes, sports teams, and clubs, a good leader does not constantly re desire recognition but what he does want is to share his time, knowledge, and a little bit of his heart. And now I'd like to introduce Vicki Anders, who will discuss the virtue of scholarship. demonstrated not only by the ability to excel academically, but by a serious and diligent endeavor to gain knowledge and understanding about the world around you. The attempt to attain this goal begins with a dedication to learning and a promise to yourself to take full advantage of every worthwhile opportunity that is afforded to you. The consequence of your quest for scholarship and learning will not only serve to benefit you and add to your own personal successes, but will also enable you to help others as well. For along with the insight and wisdom gained through your efforts comes the ability to more effectively deal with the problems and concerns of a rapidly changing world. <coughs> we must all remember that knowledge is the key to understanding, and understanding is the door to a more promising tomorrow. Now I'd like to introduce Nikki Johnson, who will be speaking to you about Character is one of the four pillars of the National Honor Society. Unlike the other three pillars, leadership, scholarship, and service. 
character is a bit more intangible. Although everyone has a different idea of exactly what character is, in the dictionary, character is defined as moral excellence or the aggregate of qualities that distinguishes one person from another. In some ways, character encompasses the other three pillars, yet a person who exhibits scholarship, leadership, and service does not necessarily have character. A person with character takes criticism well and is cheerful and friendly. He or she keeps commitments to organizations and personal pledges. He or she is morally upright and possesses integrity. These qualities, which encompass a person's character, are very important to the National Honor Society, as they will be important throughout a person's life. Now I'd like to introduce Bev Schwartz, our president, who will be speaking on service. Characteristics of a National Honor Society member is service. William Jennings Bryan once said, Destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. The destiny of the North Penn community is in our hands. As students, as parents, as administrators, and as educators. And more importantly, as citizens, we have a responsibility to recognize the social problems surrounding us and to respond to their urgent call to action. During the course of last year, National Honor Society supported community housing services of Lansdale. We supported them with canned foods, with blankets, with household appliances, and with money. Community housing services under the executive direction of Mrs. Gloria Eccles assists Montgomery County residents in seeking affordable housing and provides emergency clothing and assistance to those who desperately need it. In addition, National Honor Society volunteers annually to wrap gifts to Montgomery Mall to benefit MARC, the Montgomery County Association for Retarded Citizens, and we are very proud to be the sponsoring club at North Penn for Special Olympics, which takes place annually every May. Just last week, an older man came into the community housing services office. <coughs> Mrs. Eccles, the director, knew him by name and asked how we could help him. The gentleman responded, I'm going back to South Philly. All my friends are there. We're going to shoot marbles like we used to. I want to die there because you guys are my only friends here. We can see this man as a marble himself. Not one of the tiger eye kind that can keep a little boy mesmerized for hours but as a dull gray one that's maybe even a little scratched. As little kids, when a toy no longer kept our attention, we shoved it in our pocket for later. The next time it showed up was probably in the bottom of the washing machine, later to be taken by our moms and put back in our toy boxes. For once, the responsibility is not that of our mothers. It is our own. Many of us have long since misplaced our childhood toys. But now is the time to reach into the pockets of our consciences to refresh ourselves concerning the urgent plight of our low-income neighbors who need our support, especially as the winter comes and the weather grows colder. It is time to examine all we have, supportive families, warm clothing, protective shelter, nourishing food, and to consider also those who have not. As members of National Honor Society and as members of the North Penn area, we will address the human crisis in our immediate community. The voice of the youth is a powerful voice with energy and dedication and hope that is unmatched. It is now our responsibility to see that this voice, our voice, truly makes a difference. A Chinese proverb states, be not afraid of going slowly only of standing still. As members of the 1989-1990 National Honor Society, we are already in motion.
Our keynote speaker this evening is Mr. J. Martin Carroll, the Executive Director of Field Sales Administration at Merck Sharp and Dome. He will be speaking tonight on success and how to gain it once we have passed our honor society in high school days. Mr. Carroll has, had, has experienced much success in his days. In his days of scholarship, he has attended Holy Cross University, and where he received his BA, at Batson College, where he received his MBA. In 1976, he joined Merck Sharp and Doe in manufacturing. He used his leadership skills to develop a new pharmaceutical production line in Wilson, North Carolina in 1982, and has served as a product manager, a director of business development, and a senior director in marketing. Before his, re his, his, before his re recent promotion to executive director of field sales administration, Mr. Carroll has rendered considerable service to his country and the world as a captain in the Air Force and as assistant to the deputy administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington during a short leave of absence at Mark Sharp and Dome. His friends and colleagues have know him as a man of unquestionable grace and character. Will you please welcome tonight Mr. J. Martin Carroll. Don, thank you very much. Um, it's not easy to follow such uh, excellent speakers as we've heard tonight, but I will attempt to do that. It's a pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to address such a distinguished group of students and their parents. If I could pick a short title for the talk, it would be Intend to Succeed. I'd like to explore tonight what determines or predicts success. We know one thing for sure. A short speech at a program such as tonight is usually considered success, especially by the parents. So I will try to keep the remarks short. So what does determine or predict success? With this group, you've already demonstrated certain success with your induction tonight into the National Honor Society. You have worked hard to reach this goal and honor. And certainly, as mentioned by the previous speakers, You've demonstrated strong character, leadership skills, scholarship, and dedication to community service. And these are key skills and values. And they provide a very good and strong foundation for you to build on. As you look toward the remainder of your time at North Penn, college, and perhaps a professional career, let me provide some of my thoughts on what determines success. The four concepts I'd like to review tonight are the intention to succeed, preparation, practice, acceptance or taking of responsibility, and perseverance or the ability to overcome obstacles. So let's take a moment and look at the first one. Intention to succeed. We must intend to succeed. We must set plans and objectives. If I look at the school environment, the environment you're involved in, if success is determined by you to be A's and B's, then I'm sure both of us don't know too many people who succeed when they aim for C's. So the intention of success has to be measured by what you aim for, what your objectives are. And certainly if success, as you've achieved by induction tonight in the National Honor Society, is A's and B's, then obviously you must have aimed or set your goals for A's and B's. Often when we look at people who attend college and you ask them why did they attend college, they, they search and they come up with a concept that they knew no different. They always intended to attend college, whether it was their parents that planted the seed or whether it was they themselves that set that goal. They will often say it was just given. It was an intention. They determined college was a successful milestone and they intended to succeed. In the business community, it's not much different. If you define success as building a building for so many dollars and within su such uh, certain time frames, if that's success, then the only way to achieve that is to set a plan, an objective, to build what the milestones need to be to achieve that, and then to meet that. That's intending su to succeed. So one must intend to succeed. The second one, preparation practice. You must do your homework. You're used to hearing that in school. For certainly to be inducted to the National Honor Society, you've obviously spent 
a lot of time studying, gaining knowledge, and gaining understanding. But this is true also in the business community. My children often kid me because I often use the word doing homework. They'll say, what are you doing? And I'll say, oh, I'm doing some homework. And they laugh. But the truth of the matter is, if you're preparing a report, and the report is important in terms of allowing certain people to make a decision, then it has to have the proper analysis, the proper information, so that the decision can be reached. That's doing homework. So one must prepare and practice to be successful. The third one, you must accept or take responsibility. You must aggressively pursue opportunities. In the school environment, often, that is taking advantage of the opportunity to learn, taking responsibility that it's you and up to you to learn. We all know students who blame failure on external factors, and yet we all know that what they've failed to do is take responsibility for their own actions and for their own success. In the business community, it's the same. If you're responsible for sales in a particular geographical area, then you must take responsibility for that. You can't say that this particular bad break occurred or this occurred or that occurred. If you take responsibility, you can make things happen. A project in business often will flounder and not be successful until someone takes a leadership role, takes, the ex takes and accepts the responsibility, and pr presses it forward towards success. So one must accept and take responsibility to be successful. The fourth one, you must persevere. You must never give up. In the school environment, we can see that in a couple areas. One, in order to achieve high marks, often you must study that extra half hour, that hour. You know you've got a B, but in order to achieve what your goal might be, let's say an A, then you must study an extra half hour. You must never give up, you must press forward. We see it in sports teams. How many times do you see a sports team, whether it be high school or professional or college, and you can tell whether they've never given up or whether they've given up. And you can tell if they've given up that there is not an intention to succeed. And you can almost predict the remainder of that season. However, we've all seen teams that just never give up no matter what the obstacles are. So, in order to succeed, you must persevere, you must never give up. In business, it's the same. Someone responsible for sales of any product often faces obstacles and challenges, reasons why the customer is not interested in that product. They must never give up. They must determine how they can overcome those obstacles, how they can look at new ways to approach the problem and in a sense make it into an opportunity for a sale. So they also in the business community, like school community, must never give up. They must persevere. So I've covered four areas for success. Let me give you a couple general thoughts. Beyond these four areas for success, you must never lose focus for the job at hand. Even though looking at long range plans is important, even though you must consider as juniors and seniors what school you might be interested in attending and maybe perhaps what you might want to major in and perhaps even what professional careers you're interested in. Even though that's important to do that, you must never lose sight of the job at hand. And the job at hand for you is successful completion of your high school career. In business, it's the same way. Many people enter business and their projections are, what will I do the next job? And they lose sight of their responsibilities today, which is performance in a particular job. And having lost sight of that, their performance fa fails, and then they do not succeed. So never lose focus of the job at hand, even though we all accept that long-range planning is necessary. Second item, always, always, always maintain your personal integrity and your credibility. This will provide you respect and esteem which you deserve. You represent yourself foremost, and also throughout life you will rep represent either a school or a business. Integrity and credibility is a cornerstone to your success. So, success in my opinion can be predicted and can be determined. You must intend to succeed, you must practice, 
prepare, do your homework. You must take, accept responsibility, and you must persevere. You must never, ever give up. You must establish plans, but concentrate on the job at hand. You must establish and maintain credibility. And finally, you must be yourself, because you are the best. Thank you very much. members and at this time we will be having the juniors inducted first followed by the seniors. I'd like to introduce Dr. Terry Pope who is the junior class principal. Thank you Mrs. Spinnemar. Right now I'm feeling an attitude of gratitude and I need to share this with you. I have been an assistant principal for other high schools, but never did I expect to have the opportunity or the honor to address the members of the National Honor Society. Usually that's reserved solely for the principal. So Dr. Bond, thank you for this opportunity. And now, a message to the junior members of the National Honor Society. You are about to embark on a four-star operation. Star one is scholarship. You are scholars. You will have an opportunity and a responsibility to solve and resolve the world's problems. Star two, leadership. You will have an opportunity and a responsibility to assume responsible positions to make a difference in solving and changing our world. Star three, character. I was going to say your characters, but I'm going to renege on that. Character. You will have an opportunity and a responsibility to transact your daily business and live your daily life ethically and with integrity. And you will set positive role models. I'd like you to keep in mind that famous quotation, all that is necessary for evil to exist in the world is for good men to do nothing. You have moral courage and you will do great things. Star four, service. You have or you will have the opportunity and the responsibility to share your intelligence, your leadership, your high ethical standards, with your fellow man, and that truly is a gift. So you're about to embark on a four-star operation. Go forth and light up the world. Thank you. At this time, I would like to call all of our stars in the junior class forward of the National Honor Society to be inducted. David Aberbaugh. <laughs> We'd like to ask everyone to please hold your applause until the very end. Stacy Bassman. Abra Benson. Samuel Bergman. Robin Block. Amy Brent. Craig Buck. Gary Buck.
Rachel Buckley. Avril Campbell. Noah Carp. David Chapman. Pamela Cimarelli. Robert Cohen. Christine Eckert. Amy Fishman. Carrie Flango. Joanne Frank. Heather Gazen. Jennifer Geibel. Shelly Gilmer. Lavinia Gotchell. Andrew Greenberg. Donald Hall. Julia Hahn. Lenore Hare. Richard Hawkins. Pat Hogan. Charles Hurst. Mina Jadoff. Robert Johansson. Kevin Kratz. Nasinga Lee. Alyssa Leibowitz. Jean Mahoney. Avron Marcus. Jennifer McBreen. Catherine McCluskey. Timothy McDermott. Eric McNally. Nicole Melnick. Deidre Minnemeyer. Robert Misra. Joan Mitra. Robert O'Shea. Niraj Patel, Nayana Patil, Robert Rattle, Merle Rao, Rebecca Ross. Lisa Rudolph, Catherine Schoenfelder, Wendy Skarzat,
Lee Smythe. Michael Schrammett. Jason Strauss. Jennifer Strong. Christopher Tanzos. Grace Sway. <coughs> Astrida Oxtons. Jeremy Victor. Linda Vogel. Scott Walker. Jennifer Ward. Jonathan Weil. Heather Whipple. W. Howard Wartman. Jennifer Zapata. Michelle Zapata. And Michael Zavada. Could we please have a round of applause? Seniors, intelligence is a gift, the right combination of genes and chromosomes given to us by our parents. But it remains a worthless gift unless we nurture it through many kinds of experiences, especially studying. Through your induction into National Honor Society this evening, you have demonstrated your commitment to preserving that gift of intelligence. Congratulations to all of you. Would the seniors who were to be inducted this evening please take their places? Jay On, Kristen Banker. Charlotte Daimler, and Pong Cho. Robert Klunk, Megan Federoff. Christopher Fredericks, Kelly Gerber, Susan Hartman, Brooke Henderson. Nicole Hill. David House. Jill Huber. Joanna Hurd. <coughs> Al Iacocca.
Jennifer Kearns. Shane Koshi. Charles Lee. Kevin Lindsay. Steve Lowe. Christine Marjoram. Sanjay Mathur. Patricia McGovern. Valerie McGuire. Robert Moses. Craig Moyer. Larry Nelson. Rebecca Rittenhouse. Kelly Rosen. Paul Stankus. Jennifer Vigliano. Karen Wirebuck. Dawn White. Michael Wilkins. Would you join me please in congratulating all of our students? system is all about. Your achievement as well as your efforts toward becoming totally involved in your school community is the real reason why this community supports its educational system the way it does. You are proof that it really works and that we have a formula that truly does come to fruition in the success of young people. I encourage you as you move into adult life, and that time will be coming very quickly, to build upon the very fine qualities upon which the National Honor Society is founded. That is, leadership, scholarship, character, and service. If you do nothing else with your lives, except to build and expand upon those qualities, you will in fact make an outstanding contribution to humanity. 
But being the kind of young people that I know you are, I know that you will even go beyond those qualities and make an outstanding contribution to our world and to society. I thank you for being the kind of young people that you are. I thank you for making the effort that it takes to succeed and to contribute to your own success. I congratulate all the parents here tonight who assisted and supported these young people in their efforts. I know that tonight you feel, along with myself, that it was well worth the effort. When you can come together tonight and really congratulate young people on what they have been able to achieve. Again, our warmest congratulations and best wishes to each and every one of you for very successful life careers. There's an old saying, something to the effect that if you have a task to delegate to someone, give it to a person who's busy, because they'll find the time to do it. Having looked through resumes of people being inducted tonight, I know how busy you are, and it's amazing that you're able to do what you have done and still maintain your academic average to, to keep you eligible. You're to be congratulated. I would hope that your membership in the North Bend chapter of the National Honor Society is an active one. Uh, sometimes it's frustrating from an advisor's viewpoint that when we're trying to get a project organized that there are a lot of people who are, are so committed in other areas, and that's one of the things that made you eligible, that we, we have to step back and realize that. There are a lot of opportunities that you are going to have to serve this year. Bev mentioned quite a few of them. Some involve a lot of time. Some are just short little things. We had a teacher last year who teaches a hearing impaired come to me and with a request for lyrics to songs because students in her class wanted to know how to sing the popular songs in the top 10 or the top 20 or whatever. And we had no trouble getting people to take a couple minutes and to volunteer their time for that. As I said, there are a lot of opportunities that await you. You're a valuable resource to us, and we intend to, to make those opportunities available. Just a twist on a popular phrase, just say yes when you're asked. At this time, we're ready to commence with the candlelight ceremony. Would the seniors taking part in the candlelight ceremony approach the stage?
Please extinguish your candles. On behalf of the advisors and the officers and members of the National Honor Society, we'd like to welcome the new members. Uh, I would also like Patricia Abadillo to come up on stage and Don Petrilli. Don't hide, Don. Patricia and Don were our two induction co-chairpersons, and they were responsible for the planning and the organizing and the choreography that we had this evening. I think they did a tremendous job. <laughs> the American Association of University Women have graciously again provided refreshments for us and at this time, we'd like to invite the inductees and their parents to adjourn to the auditorium lobby for refreshments. Thank you. Good night.